Hi, I'm Rob Cosden. Welcome to my shop. If you've watched many of my videos, you may have noticed how often I use my Lee Nelson router plane. Well, Benchdog just came out with their own version, and we're going to have a router plane shootout. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. So let's start by getting any perceived bias out of the way. You may or may not have known, I represent Lee Nielsen in Canada from 2000 to 2008, and I'm going to try to hold back any bias I have. If there is any, it's just because I like really good tools, and I think Lee Nielsen makes exceptionally good tools. But I'm going to try to give this a fair assessment so that if there's a less expensive option, but it's still a good tool, we need to know about it. I've yet to open this, so you're seeing this for the first time, and so am I. So before we start, let's discuss a little bit about what a router plane is. It's a pretty simple tool. It's uh, just for reference sake. This is an old record. So Rex Stanley made one, record made one. I don't know, there may have actually been others made. It's about eight inches across and a little less than four inches wide. Essentially, it's designed so that you can cut the bottom of a surface, deep up the bottom of a groove, so that it is parallel with the bottom side of the tool, which obviously meant it would make it parallel to the surface of the board. It used a kind of an L-shaped blade that you could uh, rotate up and down by means of this adjusting knob, and that would determine the depth of your cut. And there was a mechanism that was there to hold it in place. I guess that's an depth adjustment, wasn't always copied on the others. And it had fences that you could attach, although I've never found them to be very useful. Um, two knobs, you can push it, you can pull it, depending on the application, one may be a little bit easier than another. But I find it a very uh, precise tool, because you can go and you can make the depth of that groove exactly the same and when's that critical well if you're building a drawer and you want your drawer sides your drawer bottom to actually bottom out on the sides of your drawer so that you can use the drawer bottom to stiffen up the drawer then it's critical that those grooves be identical in depth and this is a great tool for doing that all right i didn't mean to make this an unboxing but i have not taken this out of the box Jake actually ordered it from Rockler. And in case you're curious, which I'm sure you are, Lee Nelson's current price is 175 and the bench dog is 125 So I guess our job is to determine whether or not the $50 is noticeable on the quality of the tool. Now, there it is. There's actually just a little bit of oil on the bottom. I'll just wipe it off so it doesn't end up all over my bench. Very similar, by the way. So similar, it's obvious that they copied the Lee Nielsen. But if there's no protecting or no protection of it, then I guess it's fair game. Now let's talk about the Lee Nielsen, and I'm going to tell you what I like about it. The the single biggest feature is the way that the blade is held. Now, I think there are some out there that the blade is actually round, don't like them at all. You bump into something and it has a tendency to twist the blade. So what I think Lee Nelson did that was the smartest was that they changed the mechanism for holding the blade still. So you've got a brass screw that engages the, uh, the cutter on a corner, pushing it against the opposite corner, which if this hole that is cut through the body of the tool is square, then that means that you're going to make this surface of the cutter and that surface of the cutter register against the two mating surfaces in here, which is a very secure hold. I really like it too that you can actually get it hand tight and yet you can still make your adjustment so that you can get a really, really fine adjustment instead of having it loose and dropping farther than you want and then you're playing that game of raising and lowering until you finally get it. Aside from that, the body is made out of ductile iron. 
And ductile iron is uh, a material that essentially is as strong as tensile steel. So if you drop it on the fl concrete floor, it's not going to break. Pretty durable stuff. It's also stabilized, meaning it's, it's flat when you get it and it'll stay flat. Um, the knobs are comfortable. They're made out of cherry with uh, most of the other pieces being brass. Um, now, some people would ask, well, what about the cutter? Well, uh, it's not something you have to sharpen a whole lot because it doesn't cut multiple feet of wood. You use it, it's typically a somewhat uh, small operation. So sharpen it once, you might not have to sharpen again for a couple of years. Uh, but the cutters are, I think all Lee Nelson cutters are cryogenically treated A2. So it's a good, it's a good iron, it's easy to sharpen, contrary to what so many people have a tendency to say about the various steels. I can sharpen this in under 30 seconds. Prep time is just preparing the back so that it's nice and flat and highly polished, just so that you get that high, highly polished surface meeting that highly polished surface and you end up with a, yeah, a great cutting edge. However, that said, it's usually used on the bottom of a joint so it's not really going to be seen, but it's always nice, always nice to have something that cuts really well. Really simple tool, well made. Focus our attention over here. And like I said, I'm looking at this for the first time. So I'm gonna give you my first impression. By the way, the Lee Nelson is made in Maine. This one is made in India. This sells for $125. Um, just a quick overall. Yeah, the machining's not bad. Maybe not quite as crisp on the top side. I'm not sure what the handles are made out of. It looks like a sapele or some kind of a mahogany-like wood. There's some tool marks on it, so it didn't get sanded perfectly smooth, and that's not something you would find on a Lee Nielsen. They always, the wooden parts are always finished well. I'm curious as to see how flat the bottom is. Now let's just compare that real quick. So I like to have a really good feel and uh, if you've seen any of the things I've done with my hand planes, it's really, I think it's really important that the rear handle or tote sit on a flat boss, this piece of steel that it sits on, so there's a really good solid contact. So if you look at this, that's not a milled surface at all, so that's right off the cast. And this, this is not a huge deal, but I'm going to point it out anyway. So you can see how that sits. And I'll just look and see what the Lee Nelson looks like. I don't think I've ever taken this off, so I'm seeing it for the first time. Okay, well, that's the same. That's right off the cast. So no difference there. Um, let's see how smooth it works. It's got a depth adjuster, same thing. Now, my first impression is that that's not nearly as smooth as the Lee Nelson, which may just simply mean that the uh, threads inside this the depth adjuster and this uh, threaded rod are just not really precise. So if I'm going to get a feel for that, and then I come over here and feel this one. Oh, yeah, this is much smoother. Does that make a difference in performance? Not necessarily, but it's going to give you an overall feel for how well it's made. Let's actually take some of these pieces out. Now I look at that and it just kind of, it's actually, it's actually uh, knurled quite sharp, which really helps when it comes time to getting a good grip on it. Now the Lee Nelson has a much finer, a much finer knurling if you compare the two. This one looks a little bit better. If you've got uh, a little bit of arthritis in your hand, you might appreciate this one a little bit more. I think there's a better fit. I'll check that too. No, that's not too sloppy. Try this one. You know, actually this one's got, this one has a little more slop. Now, as long as it's pulling up tight, I guess it really doesn't matter. Let's take the blade out. 
Now what I want to check is how well this blade fits inside that square hole. Take this one apart. Okay, let's look at the two blades. Not a whole lot of difference. Obviously this one hasn't been prepared. This is right out of the box. This one I've had for a long time and I've already gone and prepared it. So you have to ignore the fact that I've polished the bottom. No, I can't see any appreciable difference there. Look at these two knobs again. As I mentioned, there's a lot more. This isn't the same one we looked at, but the knurling is a lot deeper on the uh, bench dog. And this is stainless steel. Yeah, not a ton of difference. I want to put this cutter in and see how smooth that is. How much slop. What's really important is that since it's being pushed in that direction, you want it to lay up against those two surfaces and not rock. I can't really tell that there's any movement at all. Now if we put the Lee Nelson in. Something I just noticed. No, it's the same on this one. Just a little more pronounced than the Lee Nelson. So you can see where they've, uh, I assume that they've gone in and drilled this first and then squared the hole, which leaves an area in the middle of each flat spot where the radius of the drill is, which that's actually not a bad idea because what that does prevents any high spot in here. So it's guaranteed that the sides of the corners of the cutter are gonna lay tight in those corners. And that's on both of them, but that's just a minor observation. And they feel about the same. I don't know what the material is on this. I should have looked it up. I'll see if I can get it for you before we end the video. Okay, so let's do the flatness test first. And this is, uh, I wouldn't call it crude, but it's as precise as we need for the tool. I'm going to use a one, uh, pardon me, a one and a half thou feeler gauge. I'm using a PEC 18 inch straight edge, just a little block of wood to hold it up. And what I'm going to do is just set this upside down and squeeze the brass bolt. And that's sitting level. And then we'll set this on, make sure there's nothing underneath. Now, what we're going to do is lift this up. Actually, let me balance this a little bit better. Lift this up, put the gauge under and this chim uh, the uh, feeler gauge underneath it, and if I can move the ruler, then we know it's within tolerance there. Within tolerance there. Yeah. Oops. Well, let's actually move this down the other end. Okay, so that's within thou and half over the length. I can't imagine it being out on the width, but we'll check it anyway. All right, so that's good. So that's well within. That was the bench dog. And by the way, that does have a cast iron, pardon me, a ductile iron body, and the knobs are sapili. Now Lee Nelson. Make sure that's level. Sure, there's no debris on there. Okay, it moves, it moves, it moves. Put this down here, and it moves. Now I'm going to do this on the side. Well, didn't do that on the other one, but we will on this, and it moves. So that's within their tolerance of a thou and a half. So they're both, both certainly flat enough for the purpose of the tool. 
So if you want to take a close look at this, I'll show you the one difference that I found that's a bit of a pain if you have to deal with. On the Lee Nelson, they leave them as they come off the grinder. These guys would appear to have buffed them, and when they buff them, it ends up rounding these corners. So the difficulty is now in order to get that flat, to get really sharp corners out here, you've got to go, and it's difficult because you're having to hold it up like this, and it has a tendency to want to vibrate. But you have to remove enough material off the sole or the bottom to get down below that radius that they have put as a result of buffing it. So if you compare the two, you'll see the difference. And uh, I just ran out of patience in trying to get rid of all that. So this is where I would most frequently use a router plane. You've cut dados in the side of your case. And if you're not putting a shoulder on the piece that's going to fit in here, then you're relying on that dado depth to be precise from one end to the other. If not, you try to glue it up and it may not come together like you would or maybe slightly out of square because this is a little bit higher than this one. I never trust a dado on a table saw or even a router to get that perfect, but I do trust my router plane. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do one of each and just kind of see if there's anything I can notice in terms of how they feel when you're actually using them. So I like to keep a little bit of tension on that blade. And I'll just tighten it up a little bit more to take a bit more. All right, now I'll snug it up to hold it securely. Here's a good example of what I mean. These were done on a table saw, not touching here, but have a fair bit of material to remove out here. And you never want to plow out through the end because it'll break pieces off, so come in this way to finish it. Okay, same process with the bench dog. I've got a little bit of pressure on that locking knob. And then I'll just keep moving it until I engage the wood. Lock that down. Okay, so what we're doing is trying to determine is there a $50 difference in the value of these two tools. So the bench dog, my criticisms, the edges are sharp, whereas on the Lee Nelson, they've been eased from the factory. And that's something you could go in and do with a file yourself. The casting on the bench dog is a little bit rough. You see some areas where it's not very clean, a little bit uh, paint, applied right over the rough cast. No real attempt to clean any of it up, but that's not going to hurt the performance. It may affect the appearance of it, but that's, uh, that's going to be up to the discretion of the user, whether or not they'll want to tolerate that. And I suppose the biggest cosmetic difference is just the knobs on the Lee Nelson are nice and clean and they look refined, whereas these are just a little bit crude. They do the job, so you can't fault it that way. So I'd, uh, I'd have a hard time justifying spending an extra $50 on the Lee Nelson strictly in the performance because as, as they performed in cleaning out the bottom of those dados, there was really no difference whatsoever. So for the most part, it's a cosmetic difference. Now I just happened to notice something. I wonder if it's the same on this one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the way the cutter is and this one is just pointing off to the right a little bit, but the Lee Nielsen's pointing off to the left a little bit, so I guess it's a draw there. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that uh, what bothers me just a little bit is uh, these guys 
have done nothing but copy these exactly. And you can complain and say, well, Lee Nelson copied Stanley. Well, Stanley's been around a long time. If there were any patents, they've long since worn out. And Lee Nelson went in and made improvements, the biggest one being the way that the blade is held in place. So I, would, I personally would spend the extra $50 to support a domestic company that's being uh, somewhat innovative and putting out a really good tool, whereas you've got a, I'll call it a copycat, and they've benefited from the work that Lee Nelson did, and they produced a pretty good copy. Um, saves you $50. It's up to you, but uh, if you're looking for a personal opinion, I'd still stick with the Lee Nelson. Anyway, hope that helps. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.